I just thought this is like a movie, but I'm in it. And it's horrifying. Closed circuit cameras record a brutal attack in Victorian police cells. I just felt sick. I couldn't believe that they could treat anyone like that. The prisoner is an off-duty policewoman. Until tonight, she was known only as Person A. But now she is revealing her identity to tell her story of police brutality. I was absolutely horrified. Um, stressed, demoralised, um, and later on, when I am in the cell, uh, later on in the incident, I was just thinking, I'm in Guantanamo Bay. Yvonne Berry was 26 when she started her 25-year career in the police force. I really wanted a job with something that would make a difference, something um, with variety, excitement. Berry loved policing, especially in the fraud squad, but it wasn't easy being a female detective. And when she moved to internal affairs and started investigating her own, it got even tougher. A friend of mine said to me one day, would you like a piece of cheese? I said, what are you talking about? And he said, oh, the rats, because internal investigation are rats. The Black Saturday bushfires, which claimed 173 lives, also affected Berry deeply. Responding to the aftermath of those fires in 2009, she encountered tragedy on a horrific scale. Driving up to King Lake was just like driving into a war zone. A family who the mother decided she was going to get out and she drove out with the kids in the car and she rang her husband and she said, we can't, we can't, we can't get out. They went back and they all got in the bath and it was a cedar house. They all died. I can still see the visions of all of that stuff today. I still think about it. In 2014, Berry took extended leave to deal with her mental turmoil. She retreated to her country property, sometimes using alcohol to self-medicate. Late at night in January last year, Berry was found drunk and incoherent by a Ballarat resident. The Good Samaritan invited Berry into her home and called the local police. Berry was arrested and taken to the Ballarat police station, which is where her ordeal begins. At first, she didn't tell police she was from internal affairs, saying instead she was a lawyer in the hope they'd go easy on her. Unable to make the tap in her cell work, Berry signalled for a glass of water, but got no response. And then I thought, well, I'm still thirsty. And I looked at the toilet and thought, oh, they must get cleaned every day. So I thought, stuff it. And I pressed the button, I held the plastic cup away from the bowl, and I got a drink of water. After shouting out for a blanket, Berry's cell door was opened by two officers. A struggle ensued, and Berry was capsicum sprayed twice. What's it like to be sprayed? Absolutely disgusting. It burns like fire on your skin. Disorientated, she stumbled around the police station before being handcuffed and taken back to her cell. And he put the cuffs on so tight they nearly broke my wrists. In the cell, police began searching for a swipe card that Berry had grabbed in the struggle. She was left naked and exposed. Then she was kicked and stomped on several times. Someone from the doorway, you can see, pulls my track pants off and then pulls my underpants off. I'm face down, I'm still handcuffed and I'd been sprayed. I was absolutely helpless. Senior Constable Stephen Repack stood on Berry's legs, stomped on her ankle and then kicked her. I was excruciating. So was the spray, so was the handcuffs. But I'm just starting to think, what are they going to do next? My left ankle was really badly twisted and I've got photos of that. It was really, by the end of the week, it was black. 
and my right ankle um, suffered, a, I got a spiral fracture in the outer bone. I had no sleep. Berry was placed in a shower by police. I was in my underpants and a T-shirt. There was steam coming up. Not only does the capsicum um, activate on your skin when it's hot water, opens your pores, burns you even more, but the hot water was burning my skin. And I looked this way, there's a Perspex screen and there's two guys, two policemen standing there. And I said, guys, you've got to turn the water down, it's too hot. And the one on the left said, you're disgusting. And I thought, I don't believe you even said that. Berry was taken to a local hospital, which is mandatory for any person capsicum sprayed, and then returned to the police station. It was then Berry revealed she was also a cop, but she says this didn't seem to help. They dragged me on my hands and knees. I had huge um, finger mark bruises. There were big burly guys everywhere. I couldn't physically get up if they weren't going to help me up. Drunks are meant to be held for four hours. Berry wasn't released for 16. She would never have known that her ordeal was preserved on CCTV vision if Victoria's anti-corruption watchdog IBAC hadn't contacted her last year. Excerpts of the vision would later be played at a public hearing in which her identity was suppressed. At the hearing, the policeman who stomped on Berry's ankles claimed he'd done so to prevent Berry kicking officers. And the policewoman who'd kicked her said it wasn't a hard kick and was done to pacify Berry. I think if you look at the footage, you'll see that I wasn't not calm. I was basically lying there like a fat jellyfish. The two police officers caught on CCTV vision kicking and stomping on Berry were suspended last year, but then reinstated 12 months later. Earlier this year, eight months after IBAC told Berry it was investigating her complaint, Berry was charged by Ballarat Police. It's called a hamburger with the lot. Uh, on the 8th of January this year, I got the hamburger. I got, I think it was about nine charges of assaulting an emergency worker, being the police, attempted escape, um, act not in the good order of the jail, and there was a separate um, matter, which was a very innocuous theft of motor car. The car theft was unrelated to what happened in the cells. A month before she was arrested for being drunk, a stolen car was found outside Berry's home, and police suspected she'd been involved, a claim she strongly denies. I'd heard a commotion in the middle of the night. I went out, the keys were in the ignition, and I thought, oh. So I secured the car, I put the keys under the lip of the car, and the next thing I was being charged with theft of motor car. Getty, come on. Come Bob. In mid-2015, Berry left the police force due to her declining mental health. While the police she accused of assaulting her were allowed to return to work, she was soon facing multiple criminal charges. 7.30 has learned that in August, after seeking legal advice, the police decided to quietly drop all of the criminal charges against Berry. And now police are considering whether to charge one of the officers who allegedly assaulted her. I was personally mortified. I thought that on face value there were clear breaches of human rights and that uh, assaults had occurred. And I also thought that the behaviour of the members was inconsistent with our training and the way that we, uh, we ask our people to behave in that. So, yeah, I was very uh, shocked. Superintendent Tony Derrida says he doesn't accept the justification given by the Ballarat police for kicking or stomping on Berry. He says the force is undertaking major reforms as a result of cases in which human rights have been ignored. We're looking to change our culture totally so that human rights is something that's embedded in every element of what we do. Come on, Jenny. Berry has now taken matters into her own hands. A few weeks ago, she hired a lawyer to sue the force. Now, when you look at the footage, it's clear to me that uh, it speaks for itself and that this is not just about uh, seeking compensation. It's about 
making a stand and making sure that uh, the people in the community have recourse against this kind of action. Yvonne Berry's experience is not an isolated case. The police she met that night in Ballarat had worked at a station that has three times more complaints than other comparable stations in Victoria. Over 150 complaints were made about Ballarat officers between 2010 and 2012. For most of that night, Berry's colleagues did not know they were dealing with a fellow police officer who had worked in internal affairs. If that's not why they were nasty to me, then they were just evil and nasty to a member of the public, which is worse. Yeah, this can happen to a police officer. Yes, it could happen to anyone. And I've since found out it did and it does.